Super Bowl bachelor. Go hard in the gym, no cameras. I think I see blood, no Dracula. I'm an animal, eating up amateurs. Too active, y'all can't handle it. No, no taxing, we'll dismantle it. Taxing, shake up the building and ramble it. With it, shut up the critics and analysts. Come through dripping, I'ma set it off. Game after game, you can bet it off. Quarterback got range if you broke all right, Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in week 13. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. State alum, Jay Ajayi. He finds an opening past the 40. And he's got it across the 50 to the 47 yard line. That one, 28 yards on the ground. So much of this game is still mental, still psychological. Yeah, we just saw a big time run right there. But you have to believe he was dreaming about this last night in his hotel room before this one, thinking, hey, first time I touch it, let's go for some big yardage and set a tone. That's exactly what he got done. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 47. Here's a Johnny. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. about trying to hide receivers in certain situations but a guy of his size can't really hide him but the tight end drag route definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10 This is a Jai, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And he had a great read there from his free safety position. And, Charles, you know with those guys, it's all about their eyes. They have to be laser-focused. Yeah, I had to fake my way through it when I was playing, but now I can see exactly what they're doing. And on that play, he obviously had no presence to feel like he's being pushed for a pass. And without that, that allowed him to get up to the line of scrimmage and hold him to no gain. They fake the give. Now wins. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Please five two. Six 
They'll toss it to Ajay. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright, and this will remain a scoreless game. And there is nothing easy about being a kicker on a day like this. Yeah, I tell you, not only is the footing tough in the snow, but kicking that ball is like kicking a rock. Very difficult to get any sort of feel on your kicks. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Inside the 40, not quite to the 35. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said, write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it could be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Throwing on first is Garoppolo. Throw left side taken in by Meredith. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. inside the 10 and he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field so a decent gain but all for not on the penalty it's too bad isn't it they were feeling pretty good about it the only people celebrating the guys who just gave up that play Touchdown now on the season. And the Vikings have taken a first quarter lead. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. You always worry about the plant foot in the snow, but no problems there. And that makes the score 7-0. And now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. 
But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, and, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Dominique Rogers Cromartie up to make the tackle. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Second and six, just inside the 30. On second down, here's Wentz. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And this defense looking like they have come to play the pick six. And just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visits. What do we hear during these drills? Oh, pass. pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. Oski. That's the interception. <laughs> that means everybody finds someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. Dancing to his left. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. But I guess that answers the question whether or not they want him throwing it again right away after throwing the pick six on the previous drive. Yeah, not something conservative or underneath. Pretty big shot right there. Got him right back in the saddle and said, go ahead and sling it, big guy. Line of scrimmage. Again, the 25, second and 10. Wentz again here on second and ten. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Wentz now on first down. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and 10, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35 yard line. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They run with a Jai. A gain of three, second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them.
action. It's wins. And his throw is incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Working from the gun, Wentz. And this time he's got the hook up. It's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And Eagle first down there, Wentz to Ertz. And the names that end in TZ. The Eagles into the red zone for the first time. They have a first and 10 at the 18. Now it's a giant. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. And they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. Play action. Now wins. Flushed out right. And Jeffrey's got it. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Shotgun now for Wins. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against the zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. There we go, here we go. The They'll give it to him up the middle. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. The Eagles on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So that's going to move them half the distance. First of all, you can't jump in this situation. But think about your play calling now. Could easily change what you want to do and maybe make things a little bit easier. The penalty gets them half the distance closer, but they'll still need to come up with something on third and goal. wins. Escaping the pressure right. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. Well, I get what he was trying to do. He was moving to his right and trying to shift the coverage. 
but instead he shifted the coverage also to the right and threw it right into it for an interception. the drive with Cook. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the 22, here's second and eight. Garoppolo to throw on second down. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. The reception good for seven. It's third down. in advance, partner, but the beef feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short, and yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. On fourth down, here's Justin Vogel on to punt it away. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. Pulled in at the 24. Going to be a 43-yard punt, but a net of just 33 following a 10-yard return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And two interceptions already here in this first half. That's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones... They find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. But they find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Yeah. Can he put it aside? Let's find out. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 34. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. Anthony Barr in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Throwing now is Wentz. It's a gain of nine yards. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. The Eagles hustling to the line, clock rolling. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. Throwing his wins. And this is going to be incomplete. 
What a difference a week makes. Last week, he hit on over 80% of his passes. This week, he's down under 50%. What do you see as the difference? Well, I think we're used to seeing a drop. If someone's over 80%, they're not going to hold that number, not in this league. But a drop under 50%, that just tells me that the defense, they spent a lot of extra time on game films and came up with a really good plan to try and chip away at his timing. And he fields it cleanly. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. 21, 21. Cook as they begin on the ground. Oh, what a move. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. taken down at the 46-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. And off comes to Cook. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Screen, it's complete. The 20. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Hey, 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 hey. Again, this is Cook. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. to throw. The left side caught by Diggs. And he will score. Touchdown Vikings. Stephon Diggs as the first half is winding down. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. Heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Carlson now to add the extra point. And it's no good. Oh, he misses the extra point, and our score stays right where it is.
Carlson now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Thirteen seconds, the time remaining in the half as they come up on first down. Throwing on first is Wentz. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Daniil Hunter in there to get him, and that's sack number six for him on the year. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. This snow front that has socked much of the East Coast not going away as we are back to it in the second half. This will be fielded at the six. And how about that return as he's all the way inside the 20-yard line. And that's the type of return that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the defense now. They've got to go out on the field almost like it's a sudden change, almost like it's a turnover. They've got to go out there and try and stop them. But, boy, what a tough spot they're in. Starting the third corner with Cook. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Again, it's Cook. That he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. 11-11. say that that's one he should have held on to but when you're playing in elements like this sometimes those bullet passes those ones with a little bit of pace on them they can be difficult to hold on to Carlson able to put this one through and that will up the score now it's 23 zip so the drive stalls out inside the 15 yard line but they do get three and I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. 
other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. On first and ten, here's Wentz. Throw right side taken in by Wallace. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Now wins. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Xavier Rhodes with a pick. And now past another. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. This D wanted to put it away before we even get to the fourth quarter, widening that margin a bit further. And while they won't just empty the bench just yet, if you're a backup, start loosening up. I think you'll get a chance to play before this one is over now with that type of a cushion. Carlson on for the PAT. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that will extend this big lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is... Just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Here we go, back man. 180! Now a play fake. Wentz. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And they got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. On first down, Wentz being chased out left. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And that'll bring up second down. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. You got four. Don't go. 180. Wentz will try again on second down. They dump off underneath to Ajayi. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. On, the Eagles on third Let's down. Go. Two for five to this point. This is third and eight. again. Aguilar has it. And they're going to be 
set up down around the 15-yard line. So even with the pass interference, it's a completed pass. They'll go ahead and just take the play instead. How about the effort? Making the catch despite the pass interference. Nothing else to be gained on the play. No need to take the penalty. The play stands. Nothing in that first half. Nothing on the last drive. But they're moving now with a first and ten. They'll run with a former Badger. It's Corey Clement. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. Come on now, come on now, let's go. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Eagles get a score closer. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. Elliott good with a PAT. And that will shave a bit off the lead as it's down to a 23-point game. Elliott now to kick this one away. This will be taken short. And an alley to run. And solid field position here to start as they get it out to the 40-yard line. Any return that gets you to midfield is a great return. One first down, and you're almost in field goal position. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. Try to fire up that running game with Dalvin Cook. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, where they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle. If you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. You've got a chance to rumble. They run again on first down. Cook. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. times here today this run's not going to go anywhere they'll say no gain on the play and it'll be second and goal okay no score on that play but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long you know they trust him with the football nothing on first down so the ball remains at the eight yard line second and goal 21. Now they'll throw with Garoppolo. Stepping up. He's going to keep it. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. An extra defensive back on the field here for third and goal.
Working from the gun, Garoppolo eluding the pressure right. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings offense continues to pour it on. And it's no good. It has not been his day. That's the second extra point he's missed so far. Carlson now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will be taken down here on the return on what will wind up being the final play of this third quarter. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 31 yard line. Four down, four down. Go, go. Lady! Right there in the middle. On play action, Wentz. They'll roll him out right. And his throw here is incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. They'll run with Clement. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Oh, partner, that play brought back memories. Watching them string it out, letting the runner get all the way to the sideline area, but not letting him get out of bounds. They formed that picket fence and didn't allow him through. Not only that, got him for a loss as well here. And one of the reasons they lead in the fourth quarter, plays like that. Yeah, took a little more time off the clock, making him do it that way, didn't they? Here we go, here we go. Now Wentz on third down. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end. It's a touchback.
They start to drive with Smallwood. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. But what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Gets it to Meredith complete, and he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. The Vikings on third down, just one for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They give to Smallwood. And an alley to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The 12 yards that time and picking up the first. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. They run again on first down with Smallwood, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Second down, here's Garoppolo. Crabtree with it, over the middle. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. The Vikings on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. And off comes to Smallwood. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Yeah, let me pop out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. comes throw number one for the backup QB. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field.
This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them here as the kneel down comes. There's something special about a game in the snow. Just always fun in these elements, although a little chillier up here in the open air booth. The only thing that's not fun is that we got the mid game notification that our flight was canceled tonight, but we'll deal with that later. It was really a fun game to watch, though. It was, and there is something special about games played in the snow because the element of surprise really kicks in. You don't know how they're going to handle the ball, if someone's going to make a dramatic play just out of nowhere, and all of a sudden it just changes the course of things. But a big shout-out to our crew to make sure that we were comfortable up here, as comfortable as one could be in these elements. They took care of us and made sure we were dressed properly. So for Minnesota, the win moves them a couple games over 500 now at 7-5. and five. And they'll return home next week to take on the Detroit Lions. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, this loss cost them in the playoff chase as they fall back to 7-5 and five on the year. And they will be at home next week to take on the New York Giants. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.